Today, I'm joined by the creator of Fit Dad Fitness, Mr. Michael Ashford. Michael, how are you? Doing great, man. How are you? <laughs> Rock solid, brother. Rock solid. Man, I've been looking forward to chatting with you for a while. Been watching your story unfold here over the past year. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you because you're yeah. very consistent in the podcast game, very consistent in the fitness game. Something that I think a lot about. I think it's something that all dads need to be thinking about. So why don't, you, why don't we start here? Tell me, what, what triggered you? What was that moment where you were like, you know what? I need to get healthy. I need to get fit. What was that moment that triggered you? Yeah. Um, if you've listened to my podcast or heard me talk at all on the other podcasts, I, I've detailed this quite a bit. But, uh, you know, it was back in 2012. I was on a family, va or not a family vacation. I was on a work vacation with my family. I brought my family along. It was my wife and at the time, just my son. My daughter hadn't been born yet. And we went to Ocean City, Maryland. And I got done with work one day. We went back to the hotel, went out walking as a family out on the beach. And my wife walked ahead of us and took a photo of my, myself holding my son's hand walking along the beach. And, you know, she, she turned around, she showed me, she's like, Oh, that's a great picture of you guys. And I just, I describe it. I, I don't know another way to describe it other than just something in me snapped. I didn't like what I saw in the picture. I didn't like, not only because I didn't like how I looked, but gosh, I, I didn't like that. I could see in that picture that I wasn't doing everything that I could physically to be there for my family for as long as I possibly could affect. Obviously, I know I could get hit by a bus tomorrow, but I, I just knew that I wasn't doing everything that I could. I've got this family now. I'm responsible for leading and guiding and, and, and shaping what our future looks like as the man of the household. And that started from being physically healthy. And I had relied on good genes and good genetics for her too long. And so that was the, the impetus. So we got back from that family or that vacation. I keep saying family vacation. Uh, we got back from that that trip, and I joined a gym, and it has been darn near nonstop ever since, man. It's good for you. So you just kind of had that self awareness of, hey, something in my life needs to change. Which, quite frankly, I think we all need to see that at some at some point in time, right? Because one of the most common problems that I see happening in this society is health issues. Yeah. I just I'm blown away. It's all the time I'm having these conversations with fathers that are dealing with health issues. Would you say that your commitment to fitness is, is important to you primarily as a way to avoid the health issues that, that are creeping around every corner? Hmm. No, I, I don't. I, you know, you can rattle off the statistics. 70% of the United States is considered overweight or obese. 30% is considered obese in the obese category. You know, almost a third of our children now are considered overweight or obese. Um, you know, it's, but it, for me, it's not an avoidance. It is, I just, I never want my body to limit me from experiencing the life that, that I hopefully am building with my family and, and my, my children, my children's children. I, I never want to have that be the reason why I don't get to go on that family vacation when I'm in my 70s and, and 80s. I, I don't want to be the one slowing us down for as long as I possibly can affect. And it's not, I, I don't have it, I don't look at it as, look, I'm doing this because I want to reduce my rates of cancer. Like, mm -hmm. yes, being physically active certainly helps. I also understand there are circumstances where i I don't have any control over that. And I'm not going to worry about that. What I am worried about are the things that I can affect, which are going to be my ability to move, my ability to perform, my ability to run and play and, and be active physically and emotionally in my children's lives. Like for me, that starts with being fit and healthy. I can't do those things if I'm bedridden. Um, if I'm no, not able to stoop down onto the ground and, and pick my kids up, like if I'm not able to get off the ground myself when I'm in my you know, 50s, 60s, as, as a lot of guys are finding these days. So um, I don't know that I, I, I don't think of it as avoiding something. It's just I want to make I want to prolong it for as long as I can. 
That makes a lot of sense to me. A body in motion stays in motion. Yeah. And that's one of the primary things that, that I live by. It's not so much about the six pack on Instagram. It's about being there at your, at your daughter's wedding, right? Dancing, yeah. moving. Life, there's just so much to experience in life. For sure. <laughs> so what is, this is the biggest challenge that I have, Michael. And I want to get your feedback on this. Like as an active dad, as an active dad, I want to play an active role in my kid's life, but I'm juggling all these things all the time. Are there any ways that you have incorporated your fitness into your daily life? How do you make it all work? For me, I always describe it as I, I fit in fitness when no one else expects anything of me. And so for me, that is before everybody gets up. I'm up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> I'm at the gym by about 5, 5.15. And at that time of day, like the world is still asleep pretty much. My children and, and wife still are. No one expects anything from me. So that is my time to do exactly that, to work on myself. That, that sets the rest of my day up uh, accordingly. So I've, I've never been one to, to really work out in the afternoon. I know people's schedules are what they are. And sometimes you can't help that you can't get up early or you, you have to go later at night because of work and getting, getting the kids to school. I totally understand that. In those instances, I always recommend at least to the guys that I work with or people who ask me questions about this is it doesn't have to be the all consuming thing that I think you'll find it portrayed as on social media. If you get in three 45 minute total body resistance training, weight training workouts a week, you're doing better than 90, 95% of the, the rest of the population. And uh, look, I can program you a, a killer workout that's going to get you uh, amazing results in that instance. You also got to take care of your body and the, and the other aspects of your life when you're not in the gym. So you need to move more during your day. You know, so many of us struggle to even get in 5,000 steps in a day. And, you know, my Fitbit tells me every hour, like, you haven't moved enough. Like, prompts like that, moving more throughout the day, you know, waking up and doing push ups and sit ups and squats before you head into the bathroom to take your shower or whatnot, or, or doing it right before you go to bed. That's been, um, as technology has really kind of invaded every aspect of our lives over the last 70 years, we as a society have done a really bad job of supplementing movement and fitness with the things that technology has made irrelevant for us. You know, no longer do I have to go out and raise my own cows if I want meat and I don't have to garden and I don't have to, yeah, I, I, I can get everything pretty much delivered to me on my doorstep in two days. I don't have to be as active to get the things that I want. And we've done a really bad job as a society in total of replacing that type of movement that our fathers and grandfathers just had to do 60, 70 years ago uh, because modern convenience has made it irrelevant right now or obsolete. So uh, when so many, so many of the, the highest paying jobs in, in the relevant jobs, the jobs you're doing all the time are, are like what we're doing now on the computer typing and yeah connecting and whatnot. And when, when you're sitting down in, in a cubicle, staring at a screen for eight hours a day, nine hours a day, 10 hours a day, doesn't leave a lot of time for, for moving. Have you always been an early riser? I'm curious, Michael, you're talking about 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. How, how do you do that? Is that just your wiring or do you have to train yourself to do that? Um, you know, when I first started working out, it definitely was not that early. I when I first started working out, if I remember right, I usually woke up around seven and I, I kind of started to push it back to six o'clock so I could go to the gym each morning, uh, you know, have time to say goodbye to my wife and kids. And uh, so I would go to the, I would get up at six, go to the gym, come back home, shower and, and head off to work while my wife took our son into, uh, into daycare and eventually our daughter as well when she started staying home. But uh, as you know, as so full time, I am the director of marketing, a software company. I've led marketing teams at software companies for the last uh, decade plus. And as I rose up the ranks and some of that, um, 
some of that responsibility grew and you know me as an executive now at a company you've got other things that you have to deal with mm. i i had to be at work maybe a little bit earlier uh, my commute maybe got a little bit longer as we moved out here to denver uh, from the kansas city area several years ago my my commute time went up so i slowly pushed back that that wake up time but um I have always been an early riser. I've always been a morning person, no doubt. <laughs> so what about sleep? How does sleep play into that? I, you know, I hear Gary V talking about stay up till one and then get up at six. Like how important is sleep, do you think, to your overall fitness? Oh, it's huge. Rest and recovery is uh, perhaps more important than the actual workout itself. I mean, obviously you got to do the workout, but the rest and recovery and the way that you fuel your body through the food that you eat is massive man and so yeah i get i get plenty of sleep i i go to bed earlier that's something that i sacrificed as well when um you know when i started getting fit and active was you start to remove things that don't contribute to this thing that you're pushing for so at the time you know tv went out the window <laughs> not mm -hmm. not uh not literally but TV went away. Uh, you know, I started going to bed when my kids went to bed. Um, I didn't go out with friends nearly as much. And, you know, most of them understood. Some of them didn't. And that's life. I mean, life changes, circumstances change, and, and friendships move on and, and change. But, yeah, it's uh, rest and, and recovery and sleep are vital. Absolutely. I, and it's funny how you said that. You have to – the reality is when you become a father – and your priority is your kid or children or family, there's yeah. other things that are going to be, they just need to be sacrificed, whether it's the television or old hobbies, friends and whatnot. And I think it's really important that you look at the people around you and say, hey, are these the people that are going to help me towards my goals? Are these the type of people that are flexible and understanding? I, I spoke to the mayor here in Coral Springs, Florida, Scott Brook, and he made that point of surrounding yourself with flexible people, understanding people is a really important thing. And, and guess, what, guess what inevitably happens, right? Inevitably, those friends who didn't get it are going to have kids and they're gonna be like, oh, oh, now I understand why Michael. Yeah, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> now I get why he, didn't, he couldn't go play darts. Yeah. <laughs> so Michael, there's a lot of dads out there that either can't make it to the gym or don't want to make it to the gym. What's like the one exercise that you know, wherever you are, you can just get it in. What's that one exercise that uh, you'd rely on? I would probably say squats. Uh, that is something that certainly as we sit more as a society, we're in front of our computers, we're you know, sitting on the train or the bus or in our cars commuting to and from work, we're sitting in the stands at our kids' soccer or basketball games, like we just sit a lot. Yeah. And one of the biggest reasons for um, uh, accidents and accidents that end in death in older or, or elderly people is they've fallen and can't get themselves back up off the ground. So the ability to stoop down, get into a deep squat, and then bring yourself up out of that deep squat without holding on to anything. I mean, in some circumstances, if you're old enough, like that can be the difference between life and death, mm -hmm. but not enough of us spend time in, you know, a good deep squat on a regular basis. You know, you look at kids when they play and they can sit in that, that, baby squat uh, for just what seems like an hour and just be completely comfortable with that. As we sit in that, that um, seated position more and more as a society, we lose that flexibility, that range of motion within our hips, within our, our ankles, and, and the mobility there. We lose a lot of that mobility, and it's, uh, it's a vital movement pattern for us. And it's something that, hey, throw your kids on your back, and all of a sudden, it's a weighted movement. So. I'm all about the incorporating your kids into your exercise yeah. as much as you can safely. Yeah, safely, <laughs> right. <possibly. laughs> That's great. Of course, squat and squats are a good one too because it's not like a it's not one that everyone's like, "Oh, I'm going to go get my squats in today." But <laughs> it's not always about the sexiness of the exercise, it's about the effectiveness. It's about the functionality of it and the performance measurables that that come with it for sure. Most guys I think would probably say push-ups because it works right. the chest but uh, <laughs> right no, it's, it's squat love that that's a great one 
So, and, and look, I don't want to typecast you into any specific type of diet, Michael, but what's the one food that you just think mm. you just have to have in whatever your diet is? What's that one food? I'll go with food group and I'll say vegetables. Okay. Like, not enough, not enough people eat vegetables, man. It is, um, you know, we, we often think of potatoes as vegetables and that's a, that's a carb. That's a starch. Um, you know, I come from the mid Midwest where everything is fried and, and, uh, potatoes and, and just breaded and all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's an extremely carb heavy diet and, and nutrition that, that most of the U S has right now. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I could say, I could say lean meats as well, especially if you are working out and exercising, your body needs that protein to build muscle, to restore muscle, to keep, keep your body, uh, functioning, but yeah, vegetables, man. I mean, they just, the vegetables contain so many of the micro nutrients that our body needs to function at its highest peak, you know, the macronutrients being fat, carbs, and protein, but you know, the things like fiber and vitamin D and vitamin C and vitamin A and all, and, and all the things that create a fully functional body, vegetables are the go-to source for that. And, uh, that'd let's, be my recommendation. Let's, let's talk a little bit about vegetables, right? Because there's a lot of different ways that you can eat vegetables. <laughs> and I've heard some, I've heard some cheese rumors. covered. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what are your thoughts on veggies in a shake? Do you think that's an effective way of getting your vegetables, put them in a shake? Hey, it's better than not eating vegetables, right? Okay. Um, you know, I would say what else is going in that shake, you know, if, and, and I'm my whole mantra around food mark is eat real food eat food that's as close to its natural form and its natural state as possible sugar the sugar in fruit like fruit's not going to make you fat Uh, what's going to make you fat is if you consume too many calories in a day and you're not burning enough to offset those calories it's not that particular kind of food that's making you fat. Now, there are foods that cause inflammation and don't digest as well. Overly processed foods, like foods that come in a box or in a package or in out of the freezer, like those things aren't optimal for your body. So I always say eat food as close to its natural state as possible. And when it comes to vegetables, if you have them in a shake, look, I've got, I've got frozen um, ready to go shakes from smoothie box in my freezer right now i add a little bit of protein powder to that and it's fruits it's vegetables it's i think it's a full like three servings of vegetables in one shake and it's but it's you can see it you can see the broccoli you can see the zucchini it's there you know if you're if you're loading it down with fruit juice that's been processed like is that optimal and and sugar has been added probably not but again eating vegetables that way is better than eating none. So uh, we eat real food, man. Yeah, I interviewed Dr. Dr. Alan Cad. He's a pediatrician, you know, pretty popular po- pediatrician down here in South Florida. And he said the biggest mistake that parents are making is giving their kids juice. It's basically oh, like giving them a candy bar, you know, <laughs> yeah. just yeah. The, the killer. But I've, so w- w- just kind of break down the veggies a little bit more here, Mike, because I, I think it's an interesting topic. Yeah. I've, I've, it's been my understanding that like you said, you want to eat the, the vegetable in its natural form because when you break it down, you lose some of that goodness. Like the fibers get broken up and you kind of lose the, like, yeah. uh, for example, sauteing and butter and oil, like you're losing some of the goodness that you would actually get from that vegetable. Is that, is that true? Um, it, it can be, and it, and it is in some instances, you know, boiling broccoli, for instance, it can um, leach out some of those micronutrients that I talked about. Um, But again, it's better than not eating it. And, you know, who likes to sit around and gnaw on raw broccoli, right? (laughs) (laughs) Not my daughter. (laughs) You know, exactly. Like I'm, I'm a health, uh, I'm a health minded guy. And even I don't like to do it. I understand some of these things just sound silly and crazy. So, you know, nobody's going to go gnaw on a a raw head of broccoli, but man, (laughs) you take the good with the bad in some instances. It's not like it's removing all of the nutrients. It's just 
sure, somebody who's saying what's the the absolute best way to consume a vegetable, yeah, pull that zucchini out of the ground or <laughs> off the vine and start eating it right there. Sure, uh, you know, skin and all, absolutely. There's a lot of fiber and a lot of nutrients in the skin of a vegetable, but does it taste good? No, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that's that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that humans and, and dads make is they get really gung ho about their new diet or their yeah. new workout routine. And what they don't realize is that they freaking hate it. <laughs> they just want that intense result. But what really I think is important is sustainability, finding a oh yeah, a food that you actually enjoy eating, right? Just gnawing on a stalk of broccoli is probably not gonna be sustainable. <laughs> No. And, and, you know, you're never going to, in our house, find that we're eating the same thing all the time. Like I'm the cook of the house. I love trying new delicious meals. Like it's, it's a food is a good thing, especially mentally when you sit around the table with your family and and share a meal with them and talk yeah. about your day. Like you don't want to be eating something that you absolutely hate. Like you want to enjoy that moment. And, and there's a, there's a, another benefit to food other than just what it does for your body. And that is how it makes you feel. Can you take that too far? Absolutely. Can you, you know, eat things that, you know, you consume too much of because they taste so good? Absolutely. But, you know, there's, there's an element to food that you don't have to eat the boiled chicken breast and the brown rice and the broccoli or the, the grilled asparagus like every night for dinner. Words of wisdom, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> I want to segue out of this, uh, out of the health topic a little bit, even though that's your forte. I think we got a lot of good stuff. I'm curious about the Dad 2.0 Summit because I'm really excited. I'm going to be going to the Dad 2.0 yeah. here in February. Dads, if you're interested in dadding, you definitely want to check out the Dad 2.0 Summit. I also had the opportunity to interview Doug French on the Act Dad yeah. Awesome Dad Show as well. He's the co creator. Uh, but Michael, you had the opportunity of speaking at the event last year. Right, I what did. Was, yes, what was that experience like for you? It was good, you know. And I, I'm unfortunately I won't be able to go this this next year in 2020. Uh, schedules just didn't line up. But yeah, it was good. It was it was good to see a community of guys, a community of dads in particular, you know, step up and and really say, this is the measure of of how what it means to be a dad like we we care about being better we want to be in a community of guys that will challenge us that will push us to be better to think about the things that may not be manly to think about it was really good to get in that environment where you could have those open discussions where there was you know a hun hundreds of guys in the room talking about everything from how to start a podcast to how do you discipline your children to how, you know, exactly what we were kind of talking about earlier. Like how do you fit it all in trying to start a business and provide for your family, uh, whether it's a side hustle or whether it's the thing that you want to make your full-time job. Like it's, it's just super interesting to hear all of that put in the context of fatherhood where we're all dealing with that common denominator. We're all dads. We all have children that, that we love and adore and we, we simply want to do right by them, by our spouses and our partners, and, and certainly by ourselves. Like we all, it, it was just really cool to see uh, a room of legacy minded men coming at it from all different angles and all different topics. So great conference. I hope to go back again and, and speak again uh, in the future. But yeah, I'm, I'm pumped for you to go and, and experience it for yourself, Mark. Very cool. Well, I'm excited now. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> in your footsteps. Yeah. <laughs> so before I get into the rapid fire questions here, Michael, I just got to ask if anyone is really interested in, in your knowledge and your breadth of uh, expertise in fitness, where's the best place for people to find you? Well, I absolutely love putting together my podcast. And so the Fit Dad Fitness podcast is going to be where I would, I guess, direct people to because a, it's uh, it's all free and it's all there. And B, like if you're the kind of guy who wants to just check things out without actually talking to me, then you can't. You can listen to me on the Fit Dad Fitness podcast, and you never have to actually interact with me. Uh, I don't want that. I would love to talk to uh, to as many guys as possible. But uh, other than that, my website, FitDadFitness.com, free workout guides are there available to download. Uh, blogs, featured Fit Dad of the month, and then you know if you're interested in coaching. It's all there too. I'm, I'm not going to go deep into that here, but uh, 
yeah, I, I am a certified personal trainer. I, I coach guys all over the world, really. And um, you can find all that information on my website. Rock and roll. Fitnad, fitdadfitness.com. That's it. All right, Michael, I'm going to hit you with some rapid fire questions here. So get ready. All right. Okay. Be prepared. Get ready. <laughs> it's going to be bad. Uh, Michael, I'm really interested in stories. What is your favorite story to either read or tell to your kids? Hmm. Man, I'm looking at my bookshelf over here to see if I can <laughs> jog my memory. <laughs> um, I haven't told my I haven't told my kids this story yet because I I they're they're not quite there yet. But um, To Kill a Mockingbird, man. If I mm. if I you know it's up there on my shelf right now. If I think about the story that that tells, especially in the society that we live in right now. We need more people like uh, the Atticus Finch character in that book, man. It's, you know, it's so funny that you brought that up because my guest from last week, a couple of weeks ago, Joe Sestak, he's running for, for presidential candidate. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was his, that was his story too. He, and that's, that's funny. So great, great minds. Great, great minds. book. Great book. Uh, favorite vacation to go on with your kids and family. Where are you going? Well, um, we've only been on one vacation as a family. My wife and I actually just got back from vacation where we didn't take the kids. <laughs> Those are nice to have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the family vacation that we have gone on last, no, two years ago, we took the family to San Diego. And San Diego was a place that I went as a, as a kid with my family and just had a lot of great memories there. And that was a lot of fun, man. We, it was just so much fun. The the moment that I will remember the rest of my life is I had my son in my arms. We went out into the water and we just, we played in the waves, just he and I for gosh, probably a good hour and a half, two hours just by ourselves. And he just loved it, man. I mean, it was, it was constant laughter and I will, I will never forget the things we talked about, the, just the laughing, the fun that we had. It was, it was a great trip all around, but there are, there were moments like that sprinkled in where I was just like, yeah, this is, this is worth it. It's <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. Michael. I'm not being very rapid fire here, by the way, with my answers. <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be honest, very few are. Very few are. Uh, Michael, pineapple yes. on pizza, yay or nay? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's been said. Uh, last last question here for you. What is the best music to listen to when you're working out? Uh, for me, it is uh, like late '90s, early 2000s pop punk, like Newfound Glory and Nest and Good Charlotte, uh, The Starting Line, and those those types of bands that 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 punk rock that wasn't quite punk rock that was a little bit more pop <laughs> that okay. was what i was into uh yeah that that to me just really gets me gets me uh amped up i just love that music man it's fun it's fun music i can dig it michael <laughs> thank you for being an awesome dad and being a member of the active dad family appreciate it mark